Welcome Bourbon Real Talk. Today we are going to be discussing the eight things that we as whiskey lovers hate about liquor stores. Let's get into it. Uh, do you have any Blantons? Uh, no, we're, we're fresh out of Blantons, but um, you know you, what you might want to check out? Uh, we've got uh, cases of this. This is our store brand. It okay. tastes just like Blantons. Yeah, sounds terrible. Thanks. <laughs> Store brands. So a store brand is not exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like a brand that the store itself owns, but truth be told, because of the three tier system, liquor stores can't own a brand. But what they can do is partner with the brand to sell the product to them for less money than they would normally pay for it. They sell it for the same price that they would have sold it for if they bought it at the higher price, which gives them a fatter margin so they are incentivized to focus on those brands. Typically they're made by distilleries that are called black box distilleries that just make brands for other people. Often those distilleries don't even have their own brands. And as a result, those liquor stores have a tendency to push those brands over others and to recommend them whenever you come in and they don't have the product that you're actually looking for. But don't be too mad at that store because there's a lot of products that they're forced to buy large quantities of that have little to no margin to them and they've got to find a way to make a living so that they can continue to provide the service that you're used to. Hey man, can I help you find something? You look for something for your husband? Uh, just, no, I'm looking for your bourbon. Oh, okay, well you're in the right place. Have, okay. uh, have you uh, have you tried this uh, Jim Beam peach? Uh, no sir, not much of a flavor gal. Okay, so you like you just like the regular stuff? Just straight up, okay. uh, good Kentucky bourbon. I okay, mean, well we've got, uh, we've got some Evan Williams right here. Um, this one's actually a pretty good one. It's you know been around for a while, and this bottle's only about uh, thirty-five bucks. So you know, good value. Thirty-five bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that's more like twenty-five bucks, um, if that. Well, you, you probably don't know this, but MSRP's gone up on this, mm -hmm. and we got some information from the wholesaler recently. Yeah. So yeah, that's just how much it costs. Yeah, whatever. I'll see you later. Thank you. Patronizing women, never a good look. There's no excuse for this. Historically, most whiskey is drank by men, but that's never been the case so much so that it would justify treating a woman who was shopping for whiskey like she didn't belong there. So if you work at a liquor store and you have this attitude, just cut it out. Hey, uh, sir. Do you know where I can find the Knob Creek? Yeah, it's somewhere down there. So there's nothing more frustrating than an inattentive employee, somebody who's rude, they don't want you to take photos or take the time to do your research to see which bottle you want to purchase. But just try to understand, these people are there trying to collect a paycheck and make a living. And so maybe if everybody gave everyone else a little bit of a break, it'd be more enjoyable for everyone. Hey, uh, sir. I'm yeah. looking for the uh, barrel pick. Does someone say whiskey Sagamore rye? Uh, I, what's, I'm, I don't know what a barrel pick is. What's a, what's a barrel pick? A barrel pick is uh, when a club or an organization or even uh, another store picks a single barrel and they bottle that barrel. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we, we do that, but um, you know, you, you might want to try this Jose Cuervo watermelon. It's, it's been real popular lately. Mm, uh, hard pass, but thank you. <laughs> Uninformed salespeople, very frustrating. Hate it when I have to explain what a barrel pick is. But we also need to understand as whiskey consumers that the people that work just in the supply chain are not necessarily subject matter experts and we need to give them a little bit of a break. That individual doesn't just work in the whiskey aisle. They're responsible for vodka and wine and stocking shelves and doing inventory and all kinds of other things. And so they're probably doing the best that they can and maybe they're just having a bad day. What's going on, Bourbon Real Talk family? I'm Wes, and I'm here to tell you about how you can get involved in supporting the channel. Now, we get asked all the time, hey man, we love your content. We love what you're doing. We love the knowledge that you're dropping on us. How can we support the channel? Well, here's the way you can do that. Head over to our website, bourbonrealtalk.com, and you can find every single bit of swag that every bourbon lover needs. We've got shirts for him, shirts for her, wee glens, big glens, aroma kits, 
uh, Glenn Holders. I mean, there's no shortage of good gifts to give to the bourbon lovers in your life. So after the episode, head over to the shop and see if there's anything there that you can pick up for yourself or for a friend. And if not, just enjoy the content that we're putting out. We're just happy to have you as a listener. Y'all have any Weller? Um, nah, sorry, no Weller. Um, that's weird, because I just saw a guy, yeah, right there. He's got Weller. Um, yeah, he probably got the last one, and, and, and it's limit one, so. Uh, he, well, it looks like limit two. He's got two in his hands. Look, he's got two. Oh, uh, that's Steve. Like, he's a real important customer, and so, you know, sometimes we take special care of Steve. But. Well, I called earlier today, and they said they didn't have any in. I get here to buy something else, and I see a guy walking around with Weller. Listen, man, we, we do the best that we can. We get Weller in all the time. We're expecting another shipment in next week, so maybe if you come back next week. We'll That's what able... you told me last week. Oh. You said it'd be in this week. It's Tuesday. I'm here. We're... This guy's got two Wellers. Uh, man, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. We just put it out on the shelf, and if it goes, it goes. Yeah, if it goes, it goes. It goes to Steve is what it looks like. <laughs> So when you're out on the hunt, one of the most frustrating things is when you catch a liquor store lying to you about inventory. You did your research, you figured out where you were supposed to go, what products were coming out when, and you go out to get it, and it's disappointing. Understand though, that every time they award a bottle, they have a potential to lose another dozen customers. And so most of the time, there, there are some insidious practices out there that should absolutely stop. But most of the time, the store is trying to just do the best that they can to meet their business objectives. Hey, man. Yeah. Um, that case right here, this glass case uh -huh. with the CYPB, I just wanted to see if you could let me in there. I'm gonna get that bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. Uh, sorry, that case is reserved. Like to get access to that level of bottle, there's like one of two ways. One way is through our point system. Um, and so, uh, last year, the guy that got that bottle, it, he spends about $60,000 a year here. So, you know, if you want to spend that much, we can get you something like that. Uh, the other way is just to buy cases of something you probably don't want, like Crown Peach. And each case gets you a raffle ticket. So, you know, uh, one, of, one of two ways to get that kind of bottle. Pay to play scenarios. Super frustrating for a hunter, somebody that's willing to go out there and do the groundwork and find the stores and you get in and you find out, hey, if you're not one of my rich customers coming in and spending tons of money, you're not even in the ball game, my friend. Well, I know that it's frustrating, but you just have to understand these stores are trying to reach their business objectives and the easiest way that they can do it is to engage in business practices that are gonna con consistently bring customers in to buy the products that aren't necessarily rare that they can get on a daily basis. Hey, I'm looking for uh, Russell Reserve. Okay, uh, no problem. It's on one of those shelves over there. Just kind of dig around a little bit. There might be some tequila or vodka or gin kind of in front of it, but I think we, I think we have some over there. Okay, there's not an actual bourbon aisle? Not really, we really don't like uh, put things in a particular order, just when it comes in, we just stock the shelves, man. Okay, interesting. Also, what's that horrible smell? I don't know, it just always smells weird in here. It does smell weird in here. Dirty stores, disorganized shelves. Hey man, when I go into a store, I wanna be able to go to the section, I want it to be laid out properly, I wanna be able to find the product, I don't wanna deal with any disgusting bathrooms or anything like that. And so, you know, at the end of the day, probably doesn't affect the flavor of the whiskey, but you deserve to have a good shopping experience if you're spending your money there. Uh, excuse me, do you work here? Yeah. Um, I don't see any price tags on any of your, your bottles. So do you know what this is, Ryan? Um That one's about 300. 300? Uh-huh. Uh, wow, why is it 300? That's just how much they cost, man. I mean, that's we, we buy them from the wholesaler and they come in and, and that's just how much they're supposed to be. Okay, well, I guess I'll put it back then, <laughs> thanks. Pricing trickery, probably the thing that frustrates me the most about liquor stores. You go in, there's no shelves that have signs on them that tell you what the product's supposed to cost. And when you ask, you get an answer that you kind of feel like got made up on the spot and you know it's far above MSRP. And often when you ask questions, they're willing to lie to you about it and tell you that that's just what the price is supposed to be. For me, I just don't shop at those stores. 
So in conclusion, the first thing that I want you to know from watching this video is that no retail stores were harmed in the filming of this video. If you recognize where we shot the video, I do not want you to think in any way, shape or form that we were referring to that chain or that store whatsoever. We are just grateful that they let us film there. They're an amazing partner for Someone Say Whiskey and we love them. Uh, not gonna mention their name. Now, the second thing that you need to know is that at the end of the day, these people are all trying to run a for-profit business and there has to be business decisions that are made and sometimes those business decisions don't necessarily line up perfectly with what we would want as whiskey consumers but i think we probably need to give these stores a little bit of slack except for in the case where they're actually lying to individuals or doing something that's unethical or immoral so i i think that that will help draw down some of the tensions between whiskey lovers and retail stores and the third thing is if this is the first time that you've watched this channel, I wanna tell you a, a little bit about our show philosophy. We're about bringing people together around whiskey. Whiskey has an amazing power to connect people. And that's something that's really important to me as an individual because I lost a loved one to suicide in 2014. And going through that process made me realize that there are probably people all around us who feel lost, alone, abandoned, not loved, and I wanted to find a way to bring people together and whiskey does that. So I figure if I can get you connected to whiskey, the whiskey will do the rest of the work and get you connected to other people. And then no one has to feel alone, lost, unloved. Um, I also have noticed that online, that there's a lot of hate that gets shared, especially around political season. And that made me realize that if someone can hate a stranger online that they don't really know, it's just as easy for me to love them. And that's why I end every podcast the same way, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. And I'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. You know what's funny? What? I'm banned for life in this store. <laughs> no way. Yeah. They don't know it's me. And now we're recording. <laughs> this is magic. Sound well.